In the Yucatan Peninsula, there is a large pyramid named the Temple of Kukulkan. This step pyramid is constructed of very large limestone bricks. When this structure was first discovered in the early 1900s, it was completely covered in dirt and rubble. Other sections of the complex were also buried. It's often claimed that the pyramids in the surrounding complexes have been covered in earth by those who made them. The section seen in this image is a great example of why this is not the case. There's a set of stairs leading to the top of the platform. If the builders of this site had buried this section intentionally, then the stairs would have no purpose because of the dirt covering the steps. Also, if you look at the dirt that had been covering the ruins, you can see that there is stratification, which are layers of sediment. Stratification is evidence of recurring sedimentary deposits created by tidal forces. If the creators of the Temple of Kukulkan had placed dirt on top of the structure, you would not see uniform stratification. The observatory section at this site is also covered in soil. Why would anyone cover an observatory in dirt? These are all indications that the dirt was deposited on top of the structures by a massive catastrophe. In Guatemala, the impressive Tikal Pyramid was almost unrecognizable upon its initial discovery in 1848 compared to its appearance nowadays. The pyramid was covered in a conglomeration of soil and rocks so thick that trees were able to grow on top of the structure. It's not just pyramids that were buried. Entire ancient cities have become completely covered in soil and vegetation, to the point to where only LiDAR can detect them now. In southern Mexico, LiDAR surveys were conducted to map out the region where Mayan and Olmec people had settled, and enormous complexes of ancient ruins were discovered under the vegetation. How would entire cities have been buried and overgrown so completely? It also appears that the structures were damaged, as the tops of the pyramids are missing, with only chipped and worn stone remaining. The square structures also appear to have been buildings at one time, but now only the foundations can be seen. It appears that there was a catastrophic destruction of these ruins at some point, which significantly damaged the structures and left them buried in thick dirt. The Teotihuacan Pyramid Complex near Mexico City is another case of pyramids having been completely buried when they were discovered. It is clear that the dirt was deposited over the structure in a catastrophic way, which left the ruins only partially intact and scattered debris all around. Another theory about the deposition of soil over these structures is that over time, wind carried the dirt and placed it on top of the structures. If this were the case, then what caused all the damage? There are other reasons as to why wind is not the cause of the structure's burial, but these reasons will be discussed in depth in a later video. Stratification is also present in the deposited layer of the sediment, making it clear that the deposition was natural. Despite being fully man-made structures composed of stone blocks, the Teotihuacan pyramids appear to be nothing more than hills covered with grass and bushes before the pyramids were cleaned off completely. It's not just American pyramids which have been buried to this degree. China, for example, has many buried ancient pyramids. There's a number of pyramids which resemble Central American pyramids in China. These pyramids are covered in dirt, grass, and shrubbery, as were the Central American pyramids. There are actually a surprising number of pyramids in close proximity to each other in China, the layout of which resembles the appearance of the ancient ruins discovered in southern Mexico. There's much speculation of three large, buried pyramids existing in Bosnia as well. The largest of these buried pyramids has been named the Pyramid of the Sun, and is over 220 meters, or about 722 feet, tall. Many people claim that these pyramid-shaped landmarks in Bosnia cannot be man-made structures, since the Pyramid of the Sun is larger than even the Great Pyramid in Giza, and because the earth accumulated around the pyramid partially obscures the shape of the structure. The hills surrounding the Bosnian pyramids are an apparent result of the deposition of sediment from tidal forces. As sediment is moved around during a large flood, mud and other debris are swept up together. The mounds of sediment which are formed from flooding are referred to as flow regime bed forms. These mounds become larger as the flow rate of the floodwaters increase. The size of these hills and the height to which sediment covers the Bosnian pyramids are an indication of the size and depth of the flood which had submerged this area. During a flood, sediment is deposited mainly on the same side of structures as the direction in which the flood comes from. This is why there is more soil accumulation on one side of the Pyramid of the Sun than on the other sides. The pyramids of Teotihuacan were buried in a nearly identical manner, which can be seen in these images. 
The amount of dirt that's now covering these pyramids would indeed make them appear to be just hills, rather than man-made structures. The shape of the Bosnian pyramids definitely appeared to be the shape of actual pyramids, even more so than the Teotihuacan pyramids and other pyramids did before they were uncovered. If pyramids like the Temple of Kukulkin, the Teotihuacan pyramids, and the pyramids in China and Bosnia have all been buried under deep enough dirt for trees and shrubs to grow on top of them, then how many more ancient structures have been buried even deeper? It's no wonder that it's speculated that massive dirt mounds, such as the Monk's Mound at Cahokia in southern Illinois, are actually stone block pyramids buried deep under the dirt. According to the journals of William Bartram, published in 1791, the Cherokee and Creek Indians who lived around the Cahokia Mounds told Bartram that the Monk's Mound was constructed by, quote, the ancients many ages prior to their arrival and possessing of this country. If a civilization more ancient, and possibly more technologically advanced than the Native Americans built the Monk's Mound, then it's even more likely that the more complex structures like El Tikal were also constructed by advanced, pre-Native American cultures. Also, if the Monk's Mound was created by a lost civilization, then no one would know if there was something buried under the dirt without thorough excavation. According to Post-Dispatch science writer William Allen, a 32-foot-long block of limestone was excavated from the Monk's Mound in 1998 during the construction of a water drainage system for the mound. The stone was found 40 feet below the surface of the terrace on the western side of the mound. If the Monk's Mound was indeed created by carrying dirt or sod to the site, as historians claim, then why would there be a giant monolith buried inside of it? Limestone happened to also be what the pyramids in Mexico were constructed with, Limestone is not even found in the Mississippi River Valley where Cahokia is, so it would have to be brought there intentionally from another site. Clearly, there is more to the Monk's Mound than archaeologists claim. If a stone that large was found inside of the mound by accident, then there must be more buried beneath the soil. Machu Picchu, found in southern Peru, is another impressive complex of ancient ruins. Much of Machu Picchu also appears to have been destroyed, as even many of the largest stones lie toppled over and smashed apart, far from where they appear to have been placed originally. Many people are not aware of this fact, but upon Machu Picchu's initial discovery in 1911 by the archaeologist Hiram Bingham, the entire structure was buried. At least 30% of Machu Picchu was reconstructed as of 1976, meaning that the way the ruins appear today is not the way they looked originally. Even after the site was cleared and partially rebuilt by the Peruvian government, you can still tell that there was a catastrophe that had destroyed the site. The statue of the Great Sphinx in Giza was also discovered buried to its head in sand. The platform and plaque at the Sphinx's feet likely went unseen for thousands of years. The Great Pyramid next to the Sphinx was never buried in sand, however, due to its angle of slope along the sides and the dry nature of sand which allows it to blow away with light wind. However, the entire outer layer of polished limestone that once covered the pyramid has been destroyed. Like the Sphinx, the Moai statues on the island of Rapa Nui, also known as Easter Island, were also discovered mostly buried. The bodies of the statues were not made to be pegs to hold the Moai in place, as it might appear. They're actually designed, and each Moai has a unique body. Clearly the bodies of the statues were meant to be seen, so why were the bodies buried so deep beneath the earth? In Gujarat, India, there is a very elaborate stone structure buried underground, which has become known as the Queen's Stepwell. The myth behind its existence is that it was carved in 1063 BC as a memorial to the Queen's husband who had died. The purpose of the structure is supposedly to provide a set of stairs to walk down to reach water at the bottom. However, if that were really the case, then only servants would ever actually use the structure, and therefore it'd be completely unnecessary to make it so elaborate, since the queen would never see or use it. Real step wells are of a far simpler design. The queen would not have her subjects take up so much time and resources to construct such an elaborate step well, especially with their lack of technology. It is possible, however, that the structure was first created by a more technologically advanced civilization prior to the Indians' renovation of the structure. A catastrophe very well could have wiped out the advanced, ancient pre-Indian society and buried the structure now known as the Queen's Stepwell. Is it possible that the Indians only rediscovered the buried structure 
then proceeded to remove the dirt from inside of it and took credit for its construction, since no one could disprove it. The structure very likely was not built originally to be a stepwell, it was instead repurposed to be a stepwell later on. The Queen Stepwell closely shares the appearance of buildings in Japan that have been damaged and covered in sediment from tsunamis. Do you see a striking resemblance? It would make far more sense for the underground structures in India to have been originally constructed above ground so that they could actually be seen, and that they were buried by a catastrophe and rediscovered later on. This is exactly what seems to have happened to other ancient architectural sites like Machu Picchu, so this theory regarding the Queen's Stepwell in India is not exactly far-fetched. In Kolkhar, Cambodia, there is yet another step pyramid which has been covered in earth and vegetation and damaged. The Kolkhar pyramid shares many visual similarities to the Temple of Kukulkan in Mexico. Like the Temple of Kukulkan and other pyramids, you can see that much of the building has been damaged, and rubble lies around the structure. It's claimed that the Kolkhar pyramid was built in 921 AD. As with the Queen's Stepwell, this is likely just a claim. As more advanced technology is required to reasonably construct a building like this than Indians had access to at 921 AD. What caused so many of these ancient structures to become buried, and constructing such elaborate buildings out of megalithic stones without advanced technologies would be all but impossible. The ancient cultures that we know of did not possess such advanced tools for stonemasonry, however. This raises the question of who really built these ancient structures, and when. These are all questions that we're going to be answering in detail in a later video, so stay tuned.